right, so let me resume back in uh, and talk about what we were we left off on the last power hour. We talked about uh, con contractor construction industry and job costing, and we actually did uh, mention this is a, a copy of the last slide. We mentioned you know how complex job costing is and how complex construction contractor industry is, and all these bullet points here. A lot of people like this slide. I had some emails of people asking. Uh, about this, uh, these are these are the, the sort of the items that you will need to uh, put under your belt to train yourself or to develop uh, working with uh, contractors and in construction industry. The two that are highlighted there in green were the two that I was able to cover on the last power hour. So I just I'm just kind of I'm recognizing that as we we talk about con construction and contractor and job costing. We're probably eventually going to get to all these bullet points, but these are the two that we have talked about so far. So what I'll talk about uh, this time was two important items that I, di I didn't get to uh, showcase in the last power hour, which is the work in progress report, the new work in progress report for QuickBooks Enterprise, which is actually really, really, really neat, and the job costing center that's been out there forever and a lot of people haven't used. So I'm going to switch to QuickBooks Desktop. So what I have here is QuickBooks Desktop. Uh, enterprise edition, and, and I will actually tell you when the specific function that I'm showcasing it's available only in enterprise, or if it's also available on the regular Premier Contractor Edition. But we are talking about the Contractor Edition of uh, QuickBooks Enterprise uh, of QuickBooks. So, sorry, sorry about that. So the first thing I want to talk about. Uh, let me see. I can only see the screen. I only see Hector. Okay, so maybe you guys cannot see my screen. Sorry about that. Let me just make sure that you guys can indeed see my screen. I apologize. You guys, you all should be able to see my screen at this point. Uh, let me wait. Give me one second. I have some feedback that, okay, you guys can see my screen. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. All right. So in the contractor edition of QuickBooks, in the contractor edition of QuickBooks, there are two specific tools that I, that people don't use. It's incredible. They're out there. People don't use. One of them is the job costing center. So you have to be in the contractor edition. So the first thing I'll do, I'll go to job costing center. And I'll kind of show you what's in there because it's interesting to see what's in there. The job costing center basically has sort of a, a highlight of uh, some of the job costing related uh, reports and related uh, areas that people actually explore. You know, one of them is the top three most profitable jobs. And it kind of gives you a quick graph in terms of revenue and costs. Unfortunately, I can add customizes and, and show the top five or something like that. Um, it also shows you a really neat link here. There's 23,000 expenses not assigned to jobs. I love this one because this one actually kind of uh, gives you a shortcut to all the expenses that maybe you forgot to assign to job costs. So I'm going to click on this 23,000 here that says that it's, it's expenses not assigned to jobs. And basically, you have all these here are expenses that uh, the, the system did not see you put in any uh, in any uh, in this case in any job in particular. Now, what you're seeing in here for the most part are operating expenses. You know things like meals and entertainment, or things like gas, and and maybe it's it's common and it's 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 usual that we don't job cost this thing. So the one thing I didn't show you last time is what I like about this report is you go into this report first. And then we go to Customize Report, we go to Filters, and then we switch this out. Instead of showing all accounts, then we go down and we go to Only Cost of Sales Accounts. And what happens is you only will get the, 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 the expenses that are related to cost of goods sold, which in this case there, there is none. And at this point, we can mem memorize this report. And this is probably a report you want to monitor. 99% of times, we job cost things like cost to goods sold, but we don't job cost things like operating expenses. So that's kind of one little trick about using that report in combination. Okay, I'm going to go back to the job costing center here. And uh, a couple of things here. We have an item profitability. And by the way, all these are available through the, the reports tab. So, so it's it, these reports here are the same thing as these reports here. But what I like about this is sort of a very easy, simple way of seeing it. And I apologize, this screen here is a small screen with small text, and there's no way to really uh, increase it. Some people are saying, you know, the, the text is really small. So, yeah, no, <laughs> it is what it is. So if you click on any of these jobs by themselves, that will take you to a job profitability detail report. 
um, and these are all, and these are by item, so these are very nice here uh, to look at. So these are a really nice sort of way to get you started or get your clients started in the job costing world. Okay, so that was one of the things I wanted to cover. The other thing I want to cover is in the new QuickBooks Enterprise 2014, so um, 2014 or 2015, they added a new report called Work in Progress Summary. Now, there's the big difference between what traditionally you had available as a Work in Progress Summary and what the new Work in Progress Summary report does. So in the, in the past, the closest thing to a Work in Progress Summary we had was pulling up a, uh, an estimates versus actuals summary report, for example. So this is in the past, before this 2014 enterprise. And we actually had to export this to Excel, and we had to uh, divide the, where we stand in terms of estimated cost versus actual cost, multiply that times the revenue, and kind of see how much revenue we are supposed to invoice up to date. <laughs> that, that, that is supposedly how we did work in progress reports in the past. So it took an extra step. Now, um, somebody asked me a question if Job Costing Center is both in Enterprise and Premier. Yes, Job Costing Center, it's in all contractor editions, Premier or Enterprise. But let's talk about this specific report, which is, uh, and a lot of people don't you know, undermine the value of this report. The work in progress summary report is extremely important. Because if you have a client that has to report revenues in a true cost to completion way, basically the percentage of completion in this particular case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom this in real quick by just changing the font here, and we'll focus on one particular job. We'll look at this job here for Albert Cruz remodel. This is 64% complete, which means that uh, the estimated cost versus the actual cost is 64%. The revenue you are supposed to recognize in your books based on a cost of completion method, this is gap rules, is supposed to be 64% of my estimated revenue. Therefore, if I have invoiced 200,000, I am overstating my revenues based on the, the cost to completion method for contractors. So it's extremely important. And by the way, I'm, I'm still on the same work in progress screen. I haven't moved anywhere else. I'm just, I'm just using the numbers that we're looking at on the screen to, to make the explanation, okay? Like somebody said, you know, the screen is stuck. I'm still on the same screen here. I haven't changed anything. So, so what, what we never got in the past before is, is this representation of how much of our revenue we have earned versus how much we've actually uh, invoiced. So the old reports only give me uh, estimated revenue versus actual revenue. Now we get earned revenue, which is a multiplication of your uh, actual cost versus estimated cost times your revenue. So you get to compare whether or not you're underbilling or overbilling. Okay. Hope if if any of you don't do contractor construction accounting and are sort of you know uh, mind blown about this, you know maybe we can explain it in some other detail later on. But this is a a very specific thing with job costing. Okay, so those are the two things about job costing that I wanted to talk about and kind of talk about the value of that report because it's actually a very powerful report. Uh, now I'm going to switch over to custom reports, and this is one of my favorite things to showcase in my classes is how to use custom fields to build custom reports. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to a, a regular invoice. So let me go to customers. I'm going to go to a regular invoice. I'm going to go back to any invoices. It doesn't really matter which one it is. And, and I'll, I'll ask you to just kind of forget about the specific items that you see there and the specific descriptions. What I want to kind of focus in is working with custom fields. So whatever this item is, FP billing, right? Imagine this is something else, whatever it is. Uh, I'm going to create a, a column here for a custom field. And the custom field is going to be an item level custom field. Custom fields can only be added in the item uh, four columns for item levels can only be added from within an item. So I'm going to go into the item list, and I'm actually going to double click on any of these items. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to double click on any of these items. And by the way, it doesn't matter which one I double click on. This is just how I get to it. Uh, and then I'm going to go into custom fields. Okay. And then I'm going to get basically the screen that gives me all the different options in terms of what custom fields I can create. So I'm going to create and define fields, and then I'm going to create three custom fields. One is going to be color, 
and the other one's going to be size. Okay, and for the time being, I'm going to enable both custom fields, color and size, and I'm not going to restrict the type of data that goes in there. Now, um, in QuickBooks Enterprise only, you get the option to restrict the kind of data that goes in there. In QuickBooks Premier or QuickBooks Pro, uh, it's only a free text, which is exa exactly what we're about to do here. So I'm going to hit OK, and then I'll hit OK again. So now that this custom field has been created, the two custom fields, um, I can go to any invoice. So I'll just go to, I'll create, just create a new invoice. It'll, it'll be a lot easier. So I'll create a new invoice here, and I'll create a test customer. Okay, and I'm going to put here item code. I'll put here concrete, and then on the second item, I'm going to put wall framing. Now. Uh, the two custom fields that we created were for item levels. So I want to be able to use those custom fields within an invoice. The first, so step one is to enable them. Step two is to go into formatting here and go to customize data layout. Okay. So once I go into customize data layout, this is where I have the opportunity to uh, to edit the, the 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 template and enable those custom fields to be now used in the new template. Okay? The specific custom fields that we're working with are going to be the columns because these are the ones that manipulate the specific items. And I'm going to go ahead and enable color and size. Now, I'm not going to print them because maybe this is going to be uh, a specific thing that we're tracking internally and we don't really need the customer per se to actually look at these things. So I'm going to hit OK. And now both of my custom fields for color and size are, are open. And then I'm going to put here 200. I'm going to put here 600. So the color for concrete, I'll put here gray. And the size, I'll put S for small. And color for wall framing, I'll put brown. And then I'll put L for large. So I'm, kinda, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build up to how we build custom reports with custom fields here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this invoice. And then I'm going to do another invoice altogether uh, with so, sort of the same same type of scenario here. Let me go ahead and uh, hit yes to these things here. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to do another custom, custom uh, another invoice here using other two items, whichever they are, it doesn't really matter. Roof flashing and excavation. And then under the template, I have to make sure that I did go back to the very first template here. So I'm going to go back to the template that I edited, and I'm going to put here roof flashing, I'm going to put here black, and for size I'll put large, and then for color here I'll put gray, and for size I'll put small, okay? And I'm going to, I'm going to hit, I'm going to put here some dollar values, right? And I'll hit save and close. So what's the purpose of this is that we pull in some sort of detail report that narrows down maybe things like um, all black colored items, whatever those black color items are, or all small items, or all large items. So the first thing we have to build is a, is a detail report, a custom detail report. So we'll go to custom reports, we'll go to transaction detail, okay, and then I'll click here all dates, and then under filters, I'm going to go ahead and put here, um, go down to the actual custom field, okay, their size, and I'm looking for everything that I sold that is small, whatever in context, right, whatever is it that I'm putting there, I'm looking for everything that's small. And then I'll hit OK. And now, and then once I hit this report, I get all the, all the items that have this sort of small uh, custom field element added to it. Now, what's the challenge with this is that, uh, you know, what if the person writes small or misspells small? This is where QuickBooks Enterprise really comes in to help because what you want to do is avoid that data entry error because if for whatever reason, right, instead of putting the word S, they put, they type in small, and I'll show you. I'm going to type in small on this one. Uh, so I actually went into one of the invoices and I changed it from S to small, and I'm saving it. And when we go back to that custom report and, and we refresh it, uh, that, that uh, item should go away because no longer am I, I'm going to be able to see that. Uh, let me see this one. This one says small, we'll hit save and close, and we'll build this report again. Report, custom reports, transaction detail, filters, I go down to size, and I put S, 
I'm going to type small this way. When I type small, I'm not going to get anything that just has S in it. Right? This, that, that's the example I'm trying to illustrate. So the way we fix this is in the item list, only in enterprise, we're talking about just enterprise, when we create these custom fields, uh, which we only do from the item list, when we edit them, we have to make sure that we restrict the amount of data or the kind of data that goes in there. Uh, so this is this edit multiple choice option. And, uh, and then we're going to put here options like small, large, medium, right? Whatever, whatever it is, right? Um, and then when we're actually building an invoice, I'm going to go back to this invoice. By doing this, the user no longer has to uh, sit there and retype, uh, retype things and make sure that whatever they're typing is not restricted. It's restricted to a specific uh, group of, of information. So that's really the purpose of creating them with a drop-down menu with prefixed uh, values. And that's really as much time as I have to talk about custom reports.